I was actually in my dining room and I was eating dinner and my father came home and he put down his bags and we were eating dinner and he's like, hey. I was like, what? He's like, you're running cross country. He came and talked to me about Bobby running cross country. Um, that Bobby wants to run cross country, how can we make it work? And I was against it at first. I wanted no part of it. I don't even think I knew how far it was that you had to run. So that's when we went to the athletic director and figured out, let's go to MHSIA and get approval for a guide to run with Bobby. So we had to go through those obstacles for that we didn't have to go through for regular runners. We got through those, now let's get Bobby running and find out how we're gonna make it happen. And that's when Wayne Knieper came along. He's a, a sophomore, he's been blind since birth. He wants to run cross country and the team and the high school are, are trying to see if this will work. And that all worked. They were all very responsive to whatever we, we needed. Got us a letter so we could show the officials. The officials basically just let them know that we have someone that's vision impaired running. And they were great about it too. I said, would you like some help? And he, of course he did because Mike could not guide him through the season, Mike's the coach. So the next day uh, I showed up, a lot of anxiety, both the obstacles that I was gonna face. I had no idea what this was gonna involve, what I should do. I think I didn't even run a half mile that first practice. Um, and I also think that running on um, grass and trails and stuff, that was, threw me off a little bit first time I did it. Between myself and three other runners, we had somebody uh, there each day for Bobby, and it was difficult at first. We all had to learn sort of trial and error. Bobby was getting adjusted to us. The people that showed up, like Wayne, um, became his fatherly figure, you know, when he was running. Um, Dave Sievert, he was the assistant coach then, he would help. In time, we learned to tell him uh, what was on the course, when to turn, and, and when the exact time, how to touch him on the, the shoulder or pull him a little bit if he was drifting. And um, in no time, he got good at that. He just was not in condition, he could not run 3.1 miles. When he first started running the whole three miles, which is when we let him start, when he, he could run it in, in practice, he never walked it after that. He never walked any part of the race. He, he always ran the whole thing. Um, in 35 minutes at first, but he ran it down to 23, 22 minutes and 35 seconds. That's incredible. <laughs> In cross country, you run through all kinds of elements, everything. I mean, you run over, you'll be running over logs, uh, you'll be running through maybe small areas, a swampy area. And the first thing that came to my mind was, how is somebody blind going to be able to navigate through these obstacles, uh, even with a guide? It just, it just was amazing to me that he would even <laughs> consider doing something like this. I know most people in my position with my visual impairment really wouldn't do that. You change your stride, you change your pace so you could match Bobby's. I'd say the main thing I concentrate on is my footfalls, um, what my guide is attempting to process the information, attempting to get a sort of a layout, a map of the course so I'm not surprised. And to be honest, I don't know how, how that how that goes through his head when he uh, when he hears there's a turn coming up, whether or not it's similar to my experience of preparing for a turn. We have closed our eyes and ran, tried to run, just to see what it's like. And within about five seconds, you'll open your eyes. It's so fearful and so difficult. I don't know how he can do what he does <laughs> because it's so it's so different for him. His obstacles. Maybe that's why he didn't so say so much about his obstacles because he never knew different. He grew up, he knew he had to walk from here at point A to point B. He just did it. We saw the ground that we had to walk on. We saw the, the desk that was in the way. I'd say one of the things that's most impressed me is, is seeing how Bobby interacts with the rest of the team and, um, and how the team interacts with, with him. One, just the um, social interaction with everyone. 
or more race wise um like when you know that you're on pace for a pr and you cross that finish line under what you set to do for that day i'd say those are two pretty fun things right there as a sophomore bobby had very few friends i think people were tentative um, so other than cross country and then track in the spring he went home and then in uh, his junior year and more so this year as people got to know bobby and understood that he's witty uh, intelligent great kid to have as part of your friendship and group um, that's what i enjoyed most uh, I would always step back and Bobby was part of the both the girls and the boys and right in the groups and joking and and they stepped up then and, and sometimes when they saw a need uh, would help them. I've helped lead him once or twice and I found out it's harder than, than it looks. Like the first time I ever led him I accidentally ran him into a tree. <laughs> he was really forgiving but he didn't let me forget about that one. <laughs> I was just turning the lights uh, down for to watch the video uh, of the, the cross country teams for the year. And uh, I yelled back to the parents and everybody, not thinking Bobby was back there, that can anyone, can everyone see okay? Uh, coach, I remember at the banquet asked if everyone could see the movie. And Bobby pipes up from the back of the room, I can't see it, coach. <laughs> well, Bobby, you didn't tell me these lights are almost blinding. <laughs> I know, it was, it was awful. Oh, I think, I think someone was complaining one time about how like, bright it was outside and he's like, oh yeah, it's so bright, I can't see. <laughs> if you keep an open mind and that if you are willing to at least set foot on that line, that if you stick with it long enough, it will get easier, a lot easier. In the Bobby Steele Spirit Award that we gave out this year at the banquet, um, thanks to your suggestion three years ago. <laughs> that had nothing to do with his, his being blind. Had everything to do with his dedication, his teamwork, his spirit, his overcoming anything that comes across with him, um, being a friend to everyone. That's what that's all about. And that's why he deserves that. Not being blind, but because of everything that, kind of, that he overcame. He'll do well. He's, he, because he's disciplined and he's determined. I'm glad to be Bobby's eyes. Anyone that's ever met him would be glad to be Bobby's eyes.